In this video we will show that the closure of an open ball in a metric space is not always its corresponding closed ball. We begin with some preliminary definitions. So let M D be a metric space, so M is a set and D is a metric on M, for an element X in set M and for a real number R greater than or equal to zero, we say that the open ball centered at x with radius r is the set of points in the metric space that are less than distance r away from x. So these are the uh, points y in metric space such that the distance from x to y is less than r. And the closed ball centered at x with radius r is the set of all points in the metric space at distance at most r from x. Now we move on to definitions involving closure. Let x be a subset of m. We then say that this point x in m is a point of closure of this subset x in m if for any epsilon greater than 0 we have that the intersection of this subset x of m with the open ball of radius epsilon centered at this point x is non-empty. So what this says, this says that either x, this point here x is going to either lie in this subset x or it's going to be in a sense infinitesimally close to some element of this subset x. So no matter how small we let this epsilon be, the open ball of radius epsilon centered at x will always have a non-trivial intersection with this subset x. We then say that the closure x bar of this subset x in M is simply the collection of all of the points of closure of x in M. So all of the, these points here. And we note that x is always contained in its closure. So let's cement these definitions with an example. The example we will use will be the Euclidean metric on the closed interval from 0 to 1, which is a subset of the real number line, with the usual Euclidean metric that we will denote D. The open ball of radius 1 centered at 0 is then the following half open interval of this closed interval from 0 to 1, and the corresponding closed ball of radius 1 that's centered at 0 is the closed interval from 0 to 1, the entire space M. Now note that for any epsilon that's greater than 0 and less than 1, we have that the intersection of the open ball of radius epsilon centered at 1 with this open ball of radius 1 centered at 0 is equal to the following, which is then equal to the non-empty open interval from 1 minus epsilon up to 1. So this is non-empty. What this says is this says that the point 1 in this interval is actually a point of closure of this open ball. So with epsilon equal to 1 half we're in the following situation. So this is the open ball of radius 1 centered at 0. This is its corresponding closed ball. This is the open ball of radius epsilon centered at 1. And this is the intersection of that open ball with this open ball, which is non-empty. For any epsilon greater than zero, that intersection will be non-empty. So we have established that the closure of the open ball of radius 1 centered at zero is, in this case, equal to its corresponding closed ball, where we recall that any set is contained in its closure. We're going to establish in the next example that this does not always hold. So it's not always true that the closure of an open ball is its corresponding closed ball. We will see that in this example, the discrete metric on two points. So let M denote the two-point set consisting of the elements 0 and 1 with the discrete metric D. So the discrete metric in this case satisfies the following. The distance from the point 0 to itself and the distance from 1 to itself will of course be 0. This is a necessary condition for D to be a metric. And the distance from 0 to 1 will equal the distance from 1 to 0. 
and that will be equal to one. Equivalently, this metric space is the metric subspace consisting of the two points zero and one of the metric space that we've just seen, the closed interval from zero to one with the Euclidean metric. So the question is what are open and closed balls going to look like in this case? Well, the open ball of radius one centered at zero is just the point zero itself because zero is obviously contained in the open ball of radius one because it's distance zero from itself. However, because it's the open ball of radius one, it's all the points at distance less than one from zero. So that does not include the point one. However, the point one is included in the closed ball of radius one centered at zero because the closed ball of radius one centered at zero is all of the points in the metric space M that have distance at most one from the point zero and that will include the point one. Now, if we set epsilon equal to one half as we did in the previous example, in this case, we have that the intersection of the open ball of radius epsilon centered at one with the open ball of radius one centered at zero is going to equal the intersection of the subset consisting of the single point one and the subset consisting of the single point zero, which of course is the empty set. So what this says, this says that one is not in, is not an element of the closure of this open ball of radius one centered at zero. One is not a point of closure of this subset of M because we found an epsilon sufficiently small such that the open ball of radius epsilon centered at one, when you intersect that with this open ball, you get the empty set. And this is illustrated by the following diagram. So the open ball of radius one centered at zero just consists of this point. The closed ball of radius one centered at zero will consist of both of the points of, of, of M. Then the open ball of radius epsilon centered at one where epsilon is equal to one half. That's just going to consist of this point here because epsilon would need to be at least one to include this point as, as well. And then the intersection of this open ball with this open ball is going to be the empty set. So it's not going to include either the point zero or the point one. So we've shown that the closure of the open ball of radius one centered at zero, in this case is just equal to the single point zero. And we've shown that the closed ball of radius one centered at zero, which is equal to the set zero and one, is not equal to the closure of this open ball here. So we've established an example where the closure of an open ball in a metric space is not equal to its corresponding closed ball.